and not follow Jesus as a member of this church and be calloused toward the oppressed, poor, orphan, the widow, or the sojourner. God, there's so much that is not right around us. Injustice against people, groups of people, including black lives, not just in the history of our country centuries ago, but in recent weeks today. So then how do you vote? White professing Christians were even farther left on this side of the scale. They were even more prone to explain racial disparity due to a lack of individual responsibility and personal motivation to work and get out of poverty. Different, genuine followers of Jesus will therefore come to different conclusions on the answer to that question. McLean Bible Church may not be the right church for you. What was so eye-opening for me when I saw this was to realize that basically the more Christian you are, so to speak, the more divided you are on the issue of racialization. I think that's the best word to describe me. Uh, it's just ignorant. Like I, I, I grew up and lived, I have lived most of my life in a pretty white bubble. And uh, um, yeah, just not even stopping to think about why that is or what is unhelpful or unhealthy about that. And uh, that's what's so humbling, just, yeah, even having this, this conversation. So the idea that if everybody was just a Christian, we wouldn't have a racialization problem isn't true. The reality is our faith, which we want to bring us together across races at this point, is actually driving us further apart. And I need to say from the start that I have failed to act as I ought on the issue of racism. And God has opened my eyes to blind spots in my life and in my leadership or lack thereof in the church on this issue. I trust we know, speaking broadly, I trust we know that in every era of American racism, white Christians have often been found complacent, if not contribute. As pastors of people who gather every single week to sing our songs and give our offerings to God above us, have we been, or are we now, slow to speak and work against racial injustice around us. Lack of action is a stain of horror upon that era of church history. So here we sit 50 or so years later, and I just think we need to at least ask the question, will history see a stain in us? Not only wants to, listen to others in the church and love others in the church and grow together in unity as the church. But we also want to do justice together in the world. Like all of God's people who love God's word want that. This is pastors in America and the churches we lead instead of bridging the racial divide in our country, have historically widened and are currently widening the racial divide in our country. We lament together over any and every injustice against any and every person or group of people, including black people, not just in the history of our country, but in the last week. Individually, we don't think we have any prejudice against someone because of their ethnicity. We think even say that we're colorblind, that it doesn't matter to us if someone is black or white, when the reality is it does matter in our culture today whether someone is black or white. Oh God, we pray in light of Genesis 9 and Deuteronomy 4 for just laws in our land. 2 Samuel 8, for equal, impartial execution of those laws. 
In Proverbs 13, 23, for fair process and opportunity for all people under those laws. A system in which race, and specifically as we're talking tonight, black or white skin color, profoundly affects people's economic, political, and social experiences. Right, truth number one, just in case any of you are wondering, why, why are we talking about this? It's because God requires it and we desire it. Like true unity in diversity, something God requires, we desire. I want to sacrifice more of my preferences as a white pastor. I need to grow in my laying aside of preferences for members of this body because I want Christ to be exalted through increasing diversity in our leadership and our membership. On a related note, I, I do not want to speak from the Bible on issues that are popular among white followers of Christ while staying silent in the Bible on issues that are important to non-white followers of Christ. That's not faithful pastoring. Therefore, we, as the Church of Jesus Christ, definitively denounce and repudiate white supremacy and any form of racial, ethnic hatred as evil and a scheme of the devil. Another example, the Bible informs us, compels us to care for the poor, to love the outcast, to serve the needy. We do not, biblically, we do not, cannot indulge in the luxuries of this country while ignoring the destitute around us. And I know as a white pastor, I have blind spots. So I am part of the problem. I need friends and fellow pastors around me from different ethnicities who help me see those blind spots. And I'm, I'm committed to listening and learning and loving, laying aside whatever contemporary church growth methodology says is the best way to grow the church, i.e. ignore the issues. I want us to do the exact opposite. I want us to hear God's word clearly on these issues. And then we can trust him with the growth of his church.